let us see an example of underfitted model or a simpler model or two simple model uh, it's very easy to identify the underfitted models their accuracy on the training data itself is very low so we will use the fiber bits data and we will try to oversimplify it by choosing the complexity parameter as 0.25 then we'll try to draw the tree generally uh, oversimplified tree generally gives us an idea so I just grew the tree just till three nodes only there is only one level so there is one root and then uh, there is based on one way they will be divided into two groups so the accuracy on of this model in itself might be very low so the accuracy on the training data itself is low and on test data definitely it will be even lower so that is the problem with underfitting so we have really missed out on the useful information within the training data we oversimplified the model we can do we can put but bit more effort to increase the accuracy the model itself is uh, having some bias okay we did not uh, fit a good model to start with this is called uh, an example of underfitting so let us do a recap of models with huge bias and huge variance so overfitted models so they will have low bias that means we don't lose any information which is there available in the training data set but they will have huge variance because we try to overfit every variation within the training sample so that we are fitting a best model just for that data set whenever there is a small change from that data set we tend to uh, have we tend to make lot of error so uh, overfitted model will have low training error so low bias high testing error so it's a very highly unstable model high variance the coefficients of the model change with small changes in the data even if we make small change in the data the model whole model might change a lot okay that is called overfitting or the model with huge variance the underfitting high bias low variance there is already a certain bias in while building the model itself we are training data error itself is high and testing error will almost I mean even definitely more than training error it's a stable model it has low variance uh, the coefficient of the model doesn't change uh, but what is the real use of it the training error in itself is really high so how do we understand this variance and bias in an easy way look at these uh, four uh, diagrams in that look at the bottom left one so if our aim is to hit the center of the circle using the model we want to predict the center of the circle and if we are putting all of them together near the center that is the model with low bias and low variance now come to the second one from I mean, in the bottom that is the right right hand side uh, diagram so this model has very high bias but low variance all the points that we are hitting are very nearby but they are not near to center so that is with high bias low variance now come to the uh, diagram that is there on the top left so this model has low bias most of them are near to center but very high variance none of them are very close to center they have high variance they have their cluster I mean the spread is really high so this model over here this model over here has low variance I mean low bias which is uh, near to center but high variance now this model has high bias so none of them are near to center by default they are anyway not near to center and high variance in themselves this one has high bias they are not near to center but low variance most of them are near the point this one has low bias most of them are near to center and low variance this is the 
best model out of all the four models. In fact, we can prove that the overall error is nothing but sum of irreducible error and bias and variance. The overall error that any model will make is nothing but bias square plus variance plus the irreducible error, the random error, the error that is present as it is and bias plus variance. So this is called bias variance decomposition. In fact, the overall error in any model is equal to the sum of. So this is uh, the sum of bias and variance and the irreducible error. So this whole thing is called bias variance decomposition. So a good model need to have low bias as well as low variance. So our major effort should be to choose that best model or optimal model which will have low bias that means we are fitting the best model with uh, optimal complexity and low variance we are not overfitting we are neither overfitting nor underfitting we want to fit the best model that means we need to choose the right model complexity How do we choose the best model? So, the the overall error is sum of bias and variance. So, how do we consider this bias variance trade off and then finally choose the best model? So, as the model complexity increases, as the model complexity increases, we can see the bias reduces. If you remember. A simpler model will have higher bias and as the model complexity increases the bias actually reduces and we have also observed that as the model complexity increases first the variance reduces but the later on as the model complexity becomes really really high then we tend to overfit then the variance of the model increases so the best spot is the one with least value or the optimal value of bias and variance so these are the model maybe we need to choose the model complexity that way let's say if this is number of parameters 1 2 3 4 let's say this is 10 and we created some dummy variables and uh, indicator variables and uh, the interaction variables and total we made 20 so with 20 variables the variance is high bias is low with the you know five variables bias is high variance is low maybe with 10 variables both bias and variance are you know fairly less uh, in terms of I mean when we consider all the combinations this is the best optimal solution so the optimal model complexity can be chosen which is making both bias and variance low. There is one more point of view to this. As the model complexity increases, we know the training error, the data, the input data that we have considered, the training error keeps on reducing. If we increase the complexity, we tend to fit the model for the you know hidden patterns in the data or even random patterns in the data. So the training error keeps on reducing. But the test error might reduce in the beginning but it will keep on going increasing if you increase the complexity of the model that is what overfitting is all about so if you increase the complexity then test error might go high so even if you don't have enough complexity then both training error and test error will be high so your model can't be too simple and if you have very high complex model that means if here there are five parameters then both training error and test error is high if you have 20 input attributes training error is less test error is high maybe somewhere here when you have 10 uh, just an example when you have 10 attributes this is the place where both training error and test error is uh, low then we can say this is optimal complexity this is what the final model complexity that we may have to choose.
so unfortunately there is no actual significant method or metric that will tell us this is the model complexity that you need to choose if this is the model if this is the data set you have to choose these many parameters or there should be these many derived variables no there is no such scientific method and we also know training error is not a good estimate of the final test error so training error very rarely gives us exact same uh, test error we are not sure whether we are over complicating the model or we are not sure whether we are over simplifying the model and there is always a bias variance trade off that we need to choose and our model complexity or the model uh, number of parameters in the model need to be uh, really optimal so how do we choose the right model number of parameters so that we do this variance by a straight off so that our training error is really low as well as well as our test error is also low or what is the best model that we can fit on the given data how do we choose the optimal uh, model complexity so we can use cross validation methods bootstrapping bagging uh, these kind of uh, techniques to uh, get an idea on exact training error test error and final accuracy of the model so that we can choose based on that accuracy we can choose the best model and best complexity for the given data set